Right. Well, welcome to the show, Emmanuel, the Inspired hey. Idiots. <laughs> are you are you in London or outside of it, or you're in the UK somewhere? I'm in London. I'm in London. Nice. Yeah. We uh, we actually came to London for the first time two summers ago, and it was when you guys were having like a crazy heat wave. Oh wow! So we Did you yeah, enjoy it. <laughs> it was June 2022. It was beautiful, but we we had just come from like Spain and France where it was very hot, and we were expecting wow. to come to London and and the temperature come down a little bit. And you guys were having some weird rogue heat wave and our Airbnb, you guys don't have a lot of air conditioning there, we learned. No, so no. <laughs> everything yeah. was Not very hot. Air conditioners, no, no. <laughs> yeah, it was great. It was, I mean, we loved London. We were just biking around all the time, biking around the Queen's Palace and stuff, but it was uh, definitely awesome. hotter than we expected. Uh, well, so where are you guys actually based at? Yeah. We're in Canada. Canada. Yes. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. I don't know why yeah. I thought it was USA. <laughs> I think everybody does. You, you hear our accents yeah. and you kind of just assume American, but Absolutely. I love telling people yeah. that we're Canadian because they're like, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's also yeah. a new discovery today. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, let's uh, let's kind of dive into your story a little bit. So I was saying before we hopped on, the reason that I wanted to interview you was because you're relatively new in, in this space and the group, mm. I believe. And uh, I know that you and I connected probably like a month ago. I think you were asking me a question about getting clients on Groupon or something. And mm -hmm. I just really liked your energy because I could tell that you you were just trying. Like you just had a positive vibe about you and you were like trying to improve. You weren't giving up. You weren't like kind of letting frustration set in. You were just looking to improve. And I was like, I think this guy is really going to make this happen. And then it felt like within a couple of weeks of that, Every time I went into the group after that, I keep seeing you posting about this client and this client and this client. And I think you're currently on the leaderboard for winning the sales contest this quarter. Or close I think to it's it. Jennifer. Jennifer. Jennifer's yeah. a rock Jennifer. star. I'm, I yeah. spoke to her just two days ago. I was like, I just love what she did. But yeah. um, but no, Kelsey, you've been so helpful because I, I, I just uh, you know needed to get just some insights into certain things that are working. I just didn't want to waste time. I didn't have time to waste. And, mm. and I just needed to just hear from people who are doing some stuff. And it was so really helpful to just have you reach out, um, you know, back out me when I, I tried to message you directly. And I appreciate that. Yeah, no worries. I, I actually love like talking to people from the group when they're in that mm. beginning stage, because then when I do see them posting wins and being like, I got this client, it's yeah. cool to know like, oh, I talked to that person when they were really fresh and when they were like, you know, maybe even struggling a little bit. It just gets you really invested in their story. Yeah. I mean, my story actually goes really way back, right? Uh, I've been in LMV since quite a while. You won't believe okay. it. Um, I lost my job, I think it was like 2018, first of November. And you know, just got a call from the boss I was working for saying, I'm sorry, Manuel, it's not working. And it wasn't that long ago. My daughter was, my third child was going to be born in January. And here I am getting laid off, uh, first of November, uh, 2018. So that's when I started to just, just, just really search out for, I knew that marketing was something that I wanted to do, but, um, I didn't know where to start. Um, one of the things I found was that I spent quite a number of years doing website design, web development. I have a team of developers and designers who work with me. So, um, but I knew that that wasn't really where I was giving the best value to business owners. Um, they, they want a way to sustain themselves month after month after month. And a website doesn't answer that question. And so that's when I found LMV. My, my issue was that I found LMV started it roughly 2019, early 2019, roughly, but then got distracted, shiny objects, panicked because I saw that I've got bills to pay. I'm a dad, uh, uh, you know, I've got three kids and, um, you know, my wife, I'm thinking, okay, how in the world am I going to make this happen? And I defaulted back to what I knew best, which was web design, web development. All right. Whereas that is not really the best place I should have been in. So I spent a bit more time trying to see, okay, can I win an extra client, an extra client on web design, web development, something that can at least get me to pay the bills. But all that distraction meant that I wasn't so much engaged in LMV as much as I should have and could have been. Anyway, far, long, cut long story short, 
it was more so this year that I recognized that it was wrong of me, right? I should have stuck with it, right? I should have really reached out, even if I panic, maybe get another job, get something else that would allow me to just stay on the path. And I lost my way. And I'll be absolutely honest to say I lost my way. And only this year, a matter of a few months ago, that I came back with a sense of I'm reinvesting myself again. This time, there's no distractions, um, you know, and, and, and I'm all in. And all in meaning that this has got to work. Now, just to balance that off, um, I think I may have even posted within the group that I did get a job as well uh, within a, a digital marketing organization, right? And that digital marketing organization, I was doing well in it. First week, second week, third week, there was like, Emmanuel, you're flying, you're taking things on. And I was, because I was passionate about this. I really want to learn this stuff. But then the fourth week, the, the, the you know, the top manager kind of says, Emmanuel, I need a, an emergency meeting with you. I'm thinking, what's, what's going on? Okay, no problem. And he said, look, um, I have a few people who are above me and when they Google your name, they find your website, your social media, your this, your that. Basically, you're a bit, you know, you can be found. And that's a conflict of interest because you're running a digital marketing agency as well as working for a digital marketing agency. And we've got clients we're going to expose you to. And if we expose you to these clients, what's to stop them from, you know, going around us and going directly to you and saying, hey, can we cut a deal to work directly with you and forget about this high charging company? And that's when they gave me 24 hours to make a decision. They said, you have 24 hours to make a decision. It's either that you close Imantec, close your business, all right, close all the social media, dissolve the company and stick with us right? We see that you've got the potential to be a fast tracked into, um, you know, into uh, the next roll up, right? Uh, into promotion quite quickly, because we saw how really I've been hearing some good stuff about you. We feel really lucky to have you. However, the second option is you keep your business running, but we have to part ways. You can guess which one I choose. I chose to say goodbye. Right. Nice. I mean, it was amicable. I mean, I have nothing against them, but I understand you need to do the very best thing for their company. Um, but it just showed me to say, hold up, these, these people are charging some serious money to small business owners and there's people paying it. I can do this. I can do this for myself. Right. And so it, it was literally one month stint I have with them. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> and, I, and I've got yeah. fired. I'm thinking, OK, all right. OK. Um, that's kind of like where the story is at so far. Cause my, my aim is that I do want to get a job just to bring a bit more stability financially, you know, for, for, you know, for my wife and kids as we're in this dream in this vision of really growing this business. Cause it's, it's the way forward, but I need to have a job that doesn't conflict with it uh, in terms of conflict of interest. Did that kind of make sense? What, what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. I, I did not know that you've been in the program since 2019, but you said you kind of made a resurgence a few months ago and started it, really taking it seriously. So that makes sense. Exactly. It's almost as if everything else before, forget about that, because I was one of those people who bought programs, wasn't invested, and I looked for another program. And, and yeah. I hate that. That was just a wrong mindset. I didn't really give it the time and, and the effort required. Therefore, I, I, could, I, I couldn't say it didn't work. I didn't work. I didn't mm -hmm. work it. You know, I just, just had to own up to my own failures, really. Yeah. And I think that that's really like the biggest problem that people face. Cause I actually, I did one of the live coaching calls in the group last night and we asked mm -hmm. people like, what is your, what do you feel like your biggest fear is? If you're new in the group, what do you feel like you're afraid of? And a lot of people mm -hmm. said some variation of I'm afraid of failing. And what I said was, okay, why are you afraid of failing though? Like, let's say you do fail. You, you talk to a business and they say no you know, some people would say that's a failure. Hmm. What is your fear that that's, that's going to happen after that? And what it breaks down to for most people is I'm afraid that I'm going to run into failures and then I'm going to give up on this and, and, you know, jump ship. Cause that's what a lot of people do. They start something. Mm -hmm. It maybe yeah. doesn't get traction as soon as they think. And then they're like, okay, well I'm going to jump ship. And it kind of 
depletes your own self confidence after a while because then you know yeah. that you do that and you're like, well, now I don't even trust myself to stick yes. this out. You yeah. know? No, absolutely. I went through those those phases to say really search my own self and say, look, something's going on here, Manuel, and it's not right. You, you need to be invested if you're going to see anything. It's like riding a bike. You don't ride a bike the first time and get it wrong and you say, I'll never ride a bike again. No, you get back on, try it again, again. And then one day, I, I say these things to my kids, so I need to listen more <laughs> <laughs> to myself. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> It's like a learning uh, moment for them. And then you're like, wait, yeah, yeah, damn, exactly. damn, I, I got to yeah. take that on advice. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, so you, you decided you, that marketing agency gave you that, you know, stay or go, you decided to take the leap and go and kind of yeah. trust yourself. And what happened after that? Like how, how have things been going since that point? I mean, one of the things that I, I found is that again, I'm deep in, I went back into the program just to literally take it from week one again. Let me start to study. Let me start to implement, but quickly, <laughs> you know, change the viewing speed from one speed to 1.25, yeah. whatever it might be, just to absorb it yeah. while washing dishes, while putting the kids to bed, as soon as I, whatever time I could, I just had to just get some learning done. And then one of the things that really struck me was how Jason was explaining the need to think like a CEO. Um, you had to think like a CEO. You can't just be wearing every single hat and wash the dishes and do the floor and do everything, do every single thing. But you had to just think of where, where your strengths line in as well and which part of your departments needed some help. And so I felt like, and, and it's funny enough, it, it took me some years to realize this, but I realized that, okay, I, I tried to, you know, win a job. And then I felt the frustration of, I've got the tech piece to set up as well. I mean, I like some tech pieces, but I don't really want to be troubleshooting for hours and hours and then I can't prospect. And I realized, hold up, there's a passion that I'm seeing here. I actually enjoy talking to people. I enjoy the sales aspect of things, right? And so, and then there was just someone I thought that, okay, that it's, it's a wise approach to see if I can partner with someone who would actually focus a bit more on the tech part so I can just focus on the sales aspect. And then we could just share share the deals and so i found jamie in the group jamie van Ocken, um and i'd been following her post seeing how she was writing certain things and i was like ah, i'm a fan already I, I don't know her but i just like whenever she responded to things i had really a great respect for her and i just reached out to her and, and dm and said look um here's what i'm trying to do and I want to see if there's any way that we can kind of work together or, or, you know, just try it on one basis and just see what's possible. And she was very open to it. And, um, and it just gave me peace of mind. I don't have to worry about the tech pieces anymore. Right. I can just focus on how can I make sure that, you know, I can help clients and talk to them and understand what the problems are and sign them up and pass them on to, to Jamie. So together we can collaborate. And so far it's like a fairly new partnership. I'd say probably, I don't know, maybe a month and a half to two months or so that we've been just doing stuff together. And I found that that's going to be a key for acceleration, not try to do everything yourself, but actually recognizing, okay, it's better for me to get 50% of something than hundred percent of nothing by just trying to juggle too many balls. And, um, yeah. Yeah, and that, that's one of the things that's kind of recently happened that I think has really helped me to see, okay, have a bit more focus as to what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a really good point that, I, I mean, we see a lot of people who get started in the business and people's, sometimes their first priority before learning is like, I just mm -hmm. want to get a client. I just want to get that income right away. So yeah. people will make the mistake of trying to jump ahead. I've had people reach out to me who are like, I have this client lined up and I really want to do this for her, but I don't know how. And I'm mm. like, okay, where are you at in the training? She's like, well, I, I just finished week two, but I really want to get this client. I'm like, but you're asking me questions that you are about to learn. So you, yeah. you just need to learn those first. And I think when it comes to partnering up, some people are hesitant to partner up very early because they don't want to give up part of the profit. They're like, mm. I want to get that client 
But like you said, getting 50% of a client is better than getting 100% of nothing. And I think that you made a really good point that as your own CEO, you have to learn, like go through the learnings and understand how everything works so that you can understand what you do want to outsource. And you might be surprised by what you like. Like, I don't know, before this program, did you know that you would like the sales part of it and talking to people more? I I didn't know. I I had little small nuggets of pockets of people sometimes saying hey you're you're good at sales or you be you do well at sales but that's just in passing it wasn't something i ever took seriously but then i realized okay this program shows you there's the sales aspect speaking to the clients and there is the fulfillment aspect the tech part you know you can't be a jack of all trades and move any fast uh any direction so i just realized that the more i did it i'm more comfortable doing that (laughs) <laughs> you know, I'd, I'd rather do more of that. I'd rather get on the phone, speak to someone, understand the problem. And, and, and yeah, it's, I think it's just a great voyage of discovery for myself. Cause I, I didn't really know that until I started applying myself that actually this is what I'm doing, I'm doing best. Yeah. There's some things you don't learn until you just get in there and do it. And then you're like, oh, I actually, I thought mm. that I was going to like that better, but I kind of like this better. Yeah. <laughs> No, so absolutely. for you, what has been your uh, your best like prospecting methods? What have you been really using to to connect with with business owners in your area? Well, um, so far, one of the things I've found has been the cold emailing. All right, the cold emailing, and I actually use the script that Kelsey, um, you know, <laughs> that Kelsey put together. My um, newbie script. Yeah, that that script yeah. really helped me to just. I just like I wanted to systemize the process, so I literally I hired two VAs from Philippines, okay, and um, one of them paying her five dollars per hour, another one paying her four dollars per hour. Um, again, I never actually sat with them and had, and had any one on one conversation. The way I did my recruiting process was really just to go to online philippine sorry onlinejobs.ph and Mm -hmm. give them a task to do and ask them to record a loom video for me it helps me understand how they speak it helps me understand you know just just so basically in a nutshell i i I try to systemize the training to just weed out the people i don't want to speak to and focus on the people i do want to speak to and then i hired these two got them on board gave them a step-by-step step step one do this step two log into this step three do this so they follow this over and over again log into my accounts and do it on my behalf as if it was me again that was me allowing someone else to take care of that research on groupon message the person insert the specific fields and that really helped me to just know okay i'm not focusing on that but they are and that's what kept helping me to book a number of different CQIs. And, and I just see it as a sense of, okay, this approach works, but obviously I need to make some good money to make sure I can pump in a bit more of them doing more of what's working. Uh, and, and so it has led me to a place where I'm thinking, okay, well, I have to think of maybe higher paying clients so that if they give me a chunk of money, I can get these guys to do what they're doing a bit more. And um, that's what's what I found has been working a lot more for me, yeah, Alex. Um, the cold, yeah, cold calling. Sorry, cold emailing. And specifically from Groupon. Yeah, from Groupon. Yeah. Nice. I mean, I like anything, that. I think I've learned that you can't stay so rigid. Although I'm seeing the CQIs, I'm seeing a higher volume of CQIs. I'm also recognizing that okay, when I'm speaking to these people, they seem to be at a one man band or, um, you know, t- not quite the ideal kind of clientele that I'd love to work with. Uh, I do want people obviously who can say, Emmanuel, show me your stuff and I'm willing to pay for it. Not let's quibble over one pound or two pounds or yeah. no, I don't want to quibble over that, please. <laughs> yeah. Our, our first client did that as well. Our very first client was a podiatrist and that really was like the win that we needed. Like okay. that first client just really gives you momentum, but mm-hmm. We actually decided to stop working with him after a couple months because he was very much that way. Like mm. he number one, he didn't really seem like he really wanted to grow. And ultimately we want people who want the leads that we're gonna send yes. them. 
but also it felt like every month we had to kind of like re show him and re convince him why it was valuable and, and, you know, the money we were putting back in his pocket. And it was like, you know, going back and forth over like a few hundred dollars. And we were like, I don't feel like this is the the kind of client that we want to really invest in. So I I hear what you're saying on that. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Sorry. Go on, Alex. No, no, you, you go for it, man. You go for it. Yeah, no, I I can totally relate because I I see that okay, that's 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 my frustration at this point. That you know, I know what we're providing is really valuable for the right kind of client, uh, mm-hmm. and I just need to go find that right kind of client. <laughs> you know, I'm hungry yeah. to find that right kind of client, and, and that's what I'm just in the midst of trying to pivot from. Okay, maybe not so much get them to focus on those type of group on clientele, but okay, what else can we? pivot to that can allow us to get the, the right kind of client. So I'm open for ideas uh, if you want to throw any in during this interview as well. <laughs> yeah. Do you, are you, do you find that you're focusing on any niches right now or are you kind of just trying out things? Well, the, the, I had to be very strategic when I'm telling them for um, Groupon, when I was telling the VAs to do something, I didn't want them to just the scatterbrain, I needed a sense of, okay, this is what I want you to do. That's it. Okay. So health and beauty, look at that, research it in this way, populate my spreadsheet with this. And, and that's kind of like the ones that I found responded a lot more. Okay. But obviously I want to be looking at other niches as well. Not, not, not <clears throat> focus so much on that, um, at this point. Okay. Mm. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I like that you like systemized the the cold reach out in a way. Yeah. <clears throat> Cause then just books yeah. your calendar and you focus on doing the interviews more yeah. and and that way you kind of you're still hitting it every day, but you're paying them twenty yeah. bucks a day or thirty bucks a day or whatever to do mm-hmm. it do it for you. And it seems like a good trade off on that yeah. side of things. You yeah. know, because now you don't have to focus on that. I know we early on we partnered with a guy and he had a VA that was doing cold calls. Okay. And we were taking a lot of those sales calls and um when i'd hop on and and do the call with people it was like they just didn't even know what the fuck was going on they were like wow what is this like and then sometimes it was like receptionist or sometimes it was like just random things and i was like wow you know the the way that i i started feeling like was that the sometimes the problem with the va side is it's so uh salesy in a sense mm-hmm. mm. less relationship orientated yeah. and i found like our most successful ones were more on the relationship side like yes. okay like what is this going to do for you how does this kind of relate to what you're doing mm. and if i was able to bring you these clients like what would you pay me for them right mm. because there are cases where maybe someone's you know has a small team that you can provide them leads and they can pay you for them but it's yeah. just more or less like finding that person who would do a good job with the leads, you yeah. know, isn't uh, short sighted in a sense, right? Sees the value coming in yeah. and has mm-hmm. a good business model that they're really excited about actually getting that money coming into them mm-hmm. for us. So, so for like for us, what we found was that we're just like, you know, the more businesses we can find like that, that mm-hmm. ends up being the best. And when we went to like, local referral things that was helpful also because yeah B&I okay. meetings. we just have all these other business owners refer up to us so for you i mean if you're in a position where you're meeting all these people that maybe they're not like qualified that could still be a contact down the road mm-hmm. um, or they can have somebody in their network that they can maybe introduce you to too so uh, you know at the end of the day it's just kind of about building your network and, and your mm-hmm. business yeah. in that way oh, no, that's so brilliant. what services are, are you guys focused on for the most part um, it's message marketing and lead gen, hmm. uh, the two that we're focusing on. Okay. Yeah. Both on, uh, the lead gen, both on Facebook and Google, uh, Facebook, just Facebook. At just this Facebook. Point. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Interesting. You have been learning from Jen, haven't you? <laughs> What's that? I said, you have been learning from Jen, haven't you? I think that's exactly what, what uh, Jen Connor said was that she's focusing mostly on message marketing and specifically yeah. Facebook lead gen. Yeah. Oh yeah, nice. absolutely. <laughs> nice. So how many clients do you currently have right now? Um, it's a small number. I don't know the exact. I probably have to just 
just look up because as I said, it's quite fresh. I would say this is all, you know, fairly mm -hmm. new because mm -hmm. even right now, as I said to you, I, I, I have that frustration that, okay, some of the clients that we've got, uh, you know, I, I'm thinking bigger. <laughs> I'm thinking, okay, I want to do, I want to do a lot more, but I'm restricted by, I suppose, in a way, sometimes small-minded clients where they don't really feel like, you know, they they could see the the potential of this really r changing their business if they're willing to be a bit more invested in it. So that, mm. I suppose that's why, okay, I'm a bit frustrated, but I want to just push on to, okay, what kind of niche could I just now start to focus the same energy, the same passion, the same talking to them over CQIs and, 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 and closing deals and serving them in the same skill set. Um, but who would appreciate it far more. <laughs> That's where I'm at at the moment. I'm just being honest, you know? Yeah. 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 yeah no, fair enough. That is a yeah. thing that you run into is those people. I mean, like, like we said with that podiatrist, we kind of realized like, I, I don't think that this guy really wants to, to grow and like, you know, expand mm -hmm. this thing. So that it sounds like that's what you're looking for is people that are like excited and they're like, yeah, yeah. let's do this. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I kind of think of it like uh, when you go on like a, a vacation or something, you walk through all kinds of gift shops of just mm. dog shit. And then you find one thing that you really like and you may buy mm. it and you might bring it back and that's the thing you put on your wall. That shit sticks with you for a while. And it's like when you go and you talk to business owners, they're not good at what they're doing. Like, let's yeah. be honest. Like, like, not everyone's good at everything and what they're doing. They may have a really good service they provide, but they're not good yeah. at telling other people about it right and then you're trying to find those people because that partnership is is really good because if they've got really good word of mouth mm. easy mm -hmm. now you yeah. just need to funnel it into reviews and funnel that into you know repeat bookings and stuff yeah mm -hmm. so and are, are you mainly doing stuff in the uk yeah right now um probably everything i'm doing is in uk right now um i mm. think initially i did start some prospecting in usa had some challenges with that. I got some VAs to try to do code calls. It was 100% didn't work because <laughs> I think <laughs> sometimes people will gauge. That sounds like a sales call. That sounds like yeah. one of those mm. people from some help desk somewhere, whatever calling is calling, and it literally it was, the, the results were just poor, and I had to pivot to something that I felt like okay at least it didn't require someone to have to have a no accent as an example mm -hmm. um yeah. uh, you know at least email hey just copy my script <laughs> paste yeah 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 i think uh people who jump into using vas for cold calling specifically very quickly realize that too that you know mm. they're like oh i'm paying this va but i'm getting really nothing out of it but it's exactly like you said that mm. i think people anywhere when they get called by somebody who then has an accent and they're mm. offering them something they're like i'm being sold to and i, I think those right. people just hang up yeah yeah, yeah. And that's why i said yeah. it's it's very much like a relationship game it seems like on the call yeah. um because we've we, we haven't talked to a lot of people like personally that have done cold calling we've watched a lot of these videos of people who have done cold calling and mm. kind of the way they do it mm. first they're just putting up a lot of numbers you know like 100 150 a day mm. they're calling yeah. a shit ton of people but they're also following up with those people so like, mm. they'll like get yelled at one day and then they'll call them again the next day. <laughs> like, oh yeah, what's up, man? Yeah. yeah, you know, like they're like trying to build a relationship and they're like, yeah. and, and, and at some point that's, that's good because mm. when you just kind of fucking shotgun approach it and then mm. people are, give you like, you know, the thorn, like fuck off. And then you're like, mm. okay, and you never come back. Those yeah. people are probably uh, the ones that actually kind of need it the most because yeah. they're, they're already mm. got their guard up, you know, they're like, I don't want to be fucking yeah. sold. Don't tell me that, but it, it's interesting yeah. that you're doing the UK. So is there, is there any like differences in terms of, um, how the services get fulfilled for your clients in the UK than, than maybe a US based client? No, it's incredible. Cause Jamie is based in USA hmm. and she's doing the stuff over in UK. So all those clients have been UK based clients, SMS, emails, Facebook ads. Um, so and that, that just shows me that it, it, this stuff really works. It, again, mm -hmm. firstly with the partnership aspect of things, but also the fact that, you know, you can, wherever the location is, you, lost him for a you can make it work. You can find a way to figure out 
you know. Oh, it, there you go. It, oh, yeah. I think he froze for a bit. Or oh, did I freeze? <laughs> yeah, as well? yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. All right. We're good. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So it's predominantly UK I'm focusing on, but again, the idea is certainly to expand beyond that. You know, hundred percent will do. It's just still finding our feet and a number of things, and 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 thinking strategically. But certainly, we'll go beyond that. That's that's interesting though, especially because if you live in London, I mean, there's so much business so much. that's mm. done in London, and I mean that. I mean, we visited a short period, but. You know, we got fleeced when we left, you know, <laughs> it's expensive to be there. So it's like, God damn. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. So I'm sure people got money uh, in some of those businesses there. Yeah. Yeah. So you said that you're, you're looking for kind of businesses that are, you know, excited. They're looking to grow those kind yeah. of higher ticket clients. So do you find that there's certain industries or niches that you feel like you're thinking about or leaning towards? Um, I don't know why I think about roofing, but my, yeah. my issue with roofing is, you know, UK is almost always cold at times, um, more than it is hot. So um, I'm still trying to understand that industry a little bit more, but I'd like to, you know, I've collected some data on, on it. I'd like to see, okay, maybe I can start prospecting within that. Um, and because that's something I feel like, okay, well, there's so many houses everywhere. Um, you know, mm. there's a need there. It, it's not going to just go away. Uh, as long as people live in houses. Um, so, yeah, that, that's one that I'm thinking about. I'm considering mm -hmm. about you near know, roofing because I'm thinking one client will be worth a, a bit more than 50 pounds, you know, or some right, cheap yeah. thing that a beauty a beauty person would say. I'd rather mm -hmm. someone that says one client is worth 500 to me, a thousand. So what I'm doing now makes a difference to mm -hmm. them. Uh, those are the type of people I, I would say I, I'm, I'm more hungry to look out for. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I think that's that's a really good point that people who are just starting this maybe don't realize is that people will sometimes ask things like, you know, if they're considering the program, they're like, well, what does an average cost per lead cost? And I'm mm. like, it completely depends on the industry you're in. So when people do say that mm. they want it, they want to get into more, you know, high ticket paying clients, mm. you have to look at what the average cost per job is because yeah. The you know if you look at a cosmetic surgeon, the average cost per job for them can be tens of thousands of dollars versus mm. a tow truck where a job might be a couple hundred dollars. Yeah. Those leads are going to not cost the same. But if yeah. you can focus on something like cosmetic surgeons or roofers where they're getting thousands of dollars per job, then mm. naturally the availability that you have to charge more goes up because yeah. that's a high ticket client right there. Mm. Yeah. And if it's if it's cold there all the time, hey, maybe you guys got some furnaces, right? So maybe some HVAC, something like that to uh, get the furnaces going. <laughs> get some it, AC it, units installed. Oh, God, man. Yeah, I mean, it just seems as if uh, we get a lot more colder season than we do. Yeah. Well, yeah. Summer doesn't last very long here, you know. Mm. So uh, my wife is thinking about we should go somewhere a lot warmer than that. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we're considering stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, we live in Canada. Yeah. We know cold. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow! Yeah, we we've been uh, our our plan is like because it's cheap where we live. Uh, we're like probably like some of the most boring parts of Canada, just okay. flat land, uh, prairies, so farmland. So it's cheap yeah. to live here. Um, okay. So we're like, okay, we can move to a nicer part of Canada and triple our cost of living. Wow. You know, we get the mountains, you get all that beautiful stuff. You know, the weather's nicer. Or, yeah. or we just leave for three months <laughs> in the winter just just not come back so that's kind of what we're leaning to at the moment but um, yeah I, I like that idea of leave for winter <laughs> that's, that's mm -hmm. actually what my wife prefers just leave for winter come back when is it springtime or something you know mm -hmm. yeah. yeah we're yeah. Uh, we're gonna spend january and february in thailand this year oh i love thailand i love thai food yeah, oh, I can't wait. Well, I'm, that's that's going to be one of my first destinations when we're going to travel again. Yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah, we're I've I lived there for a little bit, but I'm excited to take him back there and uh, expose him to the Thai food as well. Wow. Um, wow. What was I going to ask? I had a oh, so I was going to ask. I mean, you've had a, a few clients now. What do you feel like your first real win in the program was? Like when you got a client, you got them some good results. Do you kind of recall mm -hmm. what exactly that looked like? Um, I think cause I, I tried a few trials, you know, that didn't really 
you know, end up with great results. And especially those trials were the ones where I was trying to win the client and fulfill myself. And it's like too much. Mm. I'd rather be prospecting. I don't want to be spending time on this. So um, I think more so the, the more recent win that was really, this feels good, was just a client who we had tons of problems with trying to get her Facebook ad set up and everything, you know, basically it's to do with her account. So I initially I pivoted. I said, okay, well, look, why don't we not focus on the Facebook issue right now? Why don't we look at, you know, message marketing, I upsold a message marketing and um, reputation management. And she's been getting some results in, in, in some of those and, and she's quite, you know, happy with it. And I said to her, look, again, remembering what James said, that why they're happy, go back to them and ask them for a referral. So I spoke to her yesterday and just asking her, hey, you know, how are you finding things? And she's just telling me all her woes about trying to hire a massage therapist and blah, 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 blah. But ultimately, she's quite happy with what's happening. And, the, you know, but uh, and I asked her, look, obviously, I'm happy to pay you to, you know, tell me about another client that will benefit from this. And of course, you know, if they become a client. You get some money. She said, look, Emmanuel, you keep the money. But if you can continue helping me month after month, that's where I'll find more value for. And so we ended up just speaking almost an hour and she's speaking about, okay, there's some other people she wants to tell me about this part of an association she belongs to. Um, it's almost like chiropractic type of, you know, association. But again, that, that felt really good to just think, okay, I want more clients like this who appreciate, who see the value, who's not so much interested in, in me rewarding them with some money as much as they're saying the service is far more valuable and I need you. And I have a very good rapport with her. So it, it's, that's a, it's a joyful thing when you have a client that, you know, you can, you really start to change some things, you know, around for them. Yeah. So, yeah. so being somebody that now you're realizing you like talking to people, you really like building that rapport and building those relationships. Have you found that in the early stages of working with a client, there's kind of techniques you use or just ways that you go about doing that? Because I think a lot of people really struggle with talking to those first few clients and not feeling mm. that like imposter syndrome. Yeah, I think, yeah, at the end of the day, it's just a casual conversation. It's not, I'm not trying to sell her anything. I'm really trying to be a part of almost like a part, well, really a partner to the organization. I, I care. I want to see you win. If you win, I win. I need to see you win. So with that mindset, it helps me to just talk to them as if, if this were my business, what are some of the things that uh, I'd be suggesting to make things better or to improve this? And, and I think it's what that angle is how I see it that, you know, it, it helps me to be able to talk to them in such a way where, Okay, we build a good rapport and, and, and we can, you know, take it to another level, you know, and upsell to more valuable stuff when, when necessary. Because that's a client that I can easily see if I start producing some income for her. She was going to want to get rid of her website and do something completely new because that was one of the things that I kind of jumped in to try to see if I can help her during a trial stage. Um, but it's just someone that it respects what you're doing for them. Um, yeah, it, feel, it feels good having that. Nice. Yeah. Casual conversations. That's, that's really the thing is if you go into it telling yourself, I'm just here to learn about your business and see if I can yeah. help and not put that pressure on yourself to think like, I, I need to close this sale. Yeah. It just puts you in a different frame of mind and you usually perform better that way. Yeah. 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 And, and the, and the cool thing about this type of business too, is you can really operate it in a lot of ways mm -hmm. because you can actually be quite authentic with somebody and just had to have a meeting about their business and the problems and the bottlenecks and, you know, how much a customer is worth to them without mm. them needing to pay you at the end of it. Because you could, in fact, like, mm. like okay, well, if I send you like a hundred people, what would you give me a month? Oh, I'd give you this. Cool. Let's get it going. Boom. Mm -hmm. Like, let's get some people go, oh, well, yeah. you know, I, I'm not really sure if, it, you know, if it would work. okay, you don't think that these customers would pay you money or you don't think I would send them to you? Oh, well, you know, I don't know if it would work. Okay, cool. 
here's 10. Boom. Okay. Do you want to keep that going? Or should I, you know, go to somebody else? Like, are you not able to fulfill this? Mm. Oh, no, no, I'm I'm good. You know, because it's like, it's very much a, you are almost like a, an owner in a business looking for opportunities to make money with other people's businesses. You know how to market, Mm. you know how to set this shit up. They don't know how to do it. And you're taking advantage of that. Yeah. Uh, But on the other side, if it's like a massage therapist, you don't know how to rub someone's neck, right? You can't fulfill the service yourself, right? (laughs) You don't want to, right? I mean, so that's kind of like the the cool thing about this business model that I saw was that like, oh, like you can just very much go and talk to a lot of local business owners and then be Mm. able to understand, hey, which business is making the most money drives a lot of profit that would pay me a lot to find them customers. Yeah. I'm going to go find them customers mm-hmm. and get that money. Mm-hmm. No, I love that. I love what you said there, Alex. So it just, I'm gauging that, although I've not really probed into your business, but are you doing leads in advance um, method? Cause that's what I pretty much sounds like value up front for those clients. Is that what you're doing? Yeah. So when we, did it, what we would actually do. So when we're working with local businesses specifically, we would convince them of giving us the ad budget because we didn't have a lot of money to throw out. Like mm-hmm. we were at the stage where we we're like selling shit. Like, like we got to pay rent. We got to sell stuff. Yeah. We were, we were very, very broke so in the beginning of this program. <laughs> we needed to wow. find people who believed in us and we could show them in a lot of ways that we were who we said we were and hmm. to give us an opportunity because yeah. that's ultimately what you need is an opportunity. It's yeah. not that you need money. You need an opportunity. Yeah. So, you know, one guy we went and we met him locally. We drove like 40 minutes away, met him at his house, right? And he wow. gave us a bunch of business, which was great. And he was really happy with the results that we were getting him. So we upsold him a couple of times. Yeah. And that gave us like our first like, whoa, because the first client we had, yeah, it was good, but we made like 500 bucks. So we're like, great. Yeah. We still haven't paid rent though. Like, you know, yeah. so like- To answer your question, we were doing more so the paid trials over leads in advance. We, we probably could have done leads in advance, but we, for that client specifically, we just said to him, You know, if like, let's, let's do a trial first. If you're not happy at the end of the trial, then no worries. You know, you, you tried something new. We got the experience of working with you and the trial wasn't even done when he was writing us $2,000 checks. Yeah. So now, now that we're more, a bit more stable in our income, we're taking more of that leads in advance approach because we have a bit more profit to to play with on that side. Mm -hmm. So specifically before we came into this program, we did a lot of social media. So, you know, Kelsey worked with like influencers and brands and I was building Instagram accounts, helping people, individuals basically build their accounts, but I wasn't really sure on the monetization. part. So that's mm-hmm. why we came into this program. Cause we're like, well, let's learn how they could actually make money directly. I knew about websites and funnels and all this stuff, but it's like, there's so many things to do. Like, what are you actually mm-hmm. going to do that makes money? Right. Yeah. So that's kind of what we've been doing. So now our main focus is, okay, let's keep doing the things that are, are earning us income right now and revenue coming in. But mm-hmm. if there's a project that we can invest additional time into to then get leads in advance in that sense, like spend our time to mm-hmm. try and grow something where we get a bigger piece of the pie, mm-hmm. then that's where, where we're, we're putting our energy into right now. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like, uh, I would say it's a little bit of a mixture of both because you, okay. uh, just similar to what you were saying in terms of you wanting to get a job, you don't want to feel desperate. Right. You don't want to feel like you're in a position where you're like, this is, yeah. I got to do this quick. And cause it yeah. leads you with shitty clients, making shitty compromises. Yeah. And it's really stunts your long-term growth. Yeah. yeah. You can't be in positions to make big money because you're not patient enough because you can't. Yeah. Be. yeah. So it's, it's kind of a balance of getting those short wins, getting that yeah. income coming in and then yeah. shifting and being like, okay, cool. Now let's invest more into someone's business specifically. Yeah. But I've seen a lot of, content as well online from different, um, I I don't want to say gurus, but different business owners, you know, one of the most famous Alex Ramosi has has been recently, but him, uh, a bunch of other people are basically like, look, I would just find a business, get them, get them business coming in the door, boom, boom. And they'll pay you for that. Like that's Mm -hmm. simple service. It's not complicated. Just get that going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The trick is finding the right business, Mm -hmm. that's finding the right business owners. Yeah. Because like you're experiencing, right? You're like, yo, these people are cheap. They're not, they're not going. <laughs> yeah. And guess what, man? Yeah. People, yeah. people we talk to all the time the same way. Like if people are asking about coming into this program, they're oh, well, you know, I don't know if I could pay thousands of dollars to do that. Okay, yeah. Cindy, 
you just told me you're spending 40 years unhappy at your job, but hey, keep it going, mm -hmm. you know? Why not? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's kind of like you're just looking for the right mentality. You can't help everybody. But yeah. the right businesses yeah. that do have margin for you, fucking yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Something yeah. that I'm wondering for you, Emmanuel, because I know you said you're at this point where, you know, you do have clients, but you're already starting to realize that, you know, what type of clients you want to keep working with. And yeah. one of the things that I, I mean, we, I think we posted a clip about this. We interviewed um, Stefan Franklin from the group. And he said that when he was just starting out, he would talk to like nonprofits and stuff or, you know, whoever, and he would just offer to do like a free hour consultation with them. And he would okay. basically go into the training, take Jason's words, like Jason's strategies on some of these 32 niches. And he was like, I would just verbatim spit out Jason's words and just offer, you know, free knowledge to these people. Even if I didn't think that I was going to get them as a client, mm. I just took that approach that like, hey, you know, let's say you, you, you already have some experience in the health and wellness and beauty industry. Let's say you decided that you're like, I want to step this up and go for cosmetic surgeons. Hmm. If you take that approach of like, hey, I'm trying to expand my cosmetic surgeon network. I've worked in the beauty industry. I've gotten results for some of these. Like you can talk about some of the results you got. Hmm. Um, I'd be, you know, and offer a free hour consultation where you talk about some different, you know, ways that they can improve their marketing or like, hey, have you guys ever tried this strategy? Be happy to explain it to you and just go into it with the thought that like, I'm just going to spit the words that I've learned in this program <laughs> Yeah. And at the very least, what's what Stefan said he found was then when he would go to networking things or mm. even not like he's like these people were all of a sudden so keen to refer me to other people, even if they couldn't hire me themselves. They're like, okay. oh, so you got to talk to Stephen. He's awesome. He's so knowledgeable just because he sent mm. that free information their way. And that allowed him to then branch out into new industries mm -hmm. more confidently. Yeah, no, uh, that, I love that. And I actually would love to watch Stefan's um, video to learn from that because, again, that's just giving someone value up front. And, and mm -hmm. when they feel like you're not trying to sell something, you're just trying to give value up front. It just lowers the friction and, um, mm -hmm. and, 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 and brings referrals. It's a goodwill. It's like you're getting some kind of reciprocity, really, for what you've done. Well, but mm -hmm. it, certainly that, that's that I'm going to solve it. I'm going to find the right kind of clientele It's just, I'm just at that stage of just trying to figure some of those things out. So, yeah. 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 That's why, like, I thought for you, I was like, cosmetic surgeons would kind of make sense if that's something mm -hmm. that you were interested in, because it is one of the campaigns that LMV gives you a strategy for. It's mm -hmm. a fun one. Like it's, I think it's like a, a social media giveaway contest or something like that. Mm -hmm. But if you feel like so far you've worked in a lot of like the health, wellness, beauty industry, then mm -hmm. that's, that's all things that you could talk about. And mm -hmm. if you just go at it from that approach of like, you know, I'm looking to expand my network in this industry and, and get some, mm -hmm. you know, relationships to maybe send referrals to. And then just offer yeah. to do a free consult with them and kind of go over what that campaign looks like and just think about yeah. it from giving value in advance i think that to me that's the one that keeps coming to my mind for you if you're like i want some some you know big dog clients with bigger yeah. budgets and that seems like that's what i would do if i was you but i appreciate it i'm actually bit. just making some notes because I, i'm <laughs> learning as well as talking i've got to make sure this sticks in my head after this call really but i do appreciate yeah. that suggestion i mean one of the things you said there alex that i was just reminded of is that you said not feeling that sense of desperation that you've got to have this client because I don't want to work with everybody. There's some people I've, I, that one lady recently I had to just refund her money because I knew yeah. that she was going to be a nightmare by if this is yeah. how you are and we've only just started, no way. Uh, and her mm -hmm. mindset was not right, you know, uh, and she was the one who actually, I only signed her up because she convinced me that she want, cause Okay, I ducked out and I said, look, I don't think you qualify for what I'm trying to do. And she kind of sold herself to me and said, look, no, I'm sure that we can do something together, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so I went ahead with it and later on to find that, okay, I should have stuck with my first instinct. She wasn't the right <laughs> fit. Here's your money back, <laughs> right? So I'm grateful that, okay, I've learned to just dodge certain bullets because um, it's important in this business to just not waste your time with the wrong kind of clientele. 
and it will sap your energy and your 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 life away and your joy oh, away. Fuck yeah, man. So was fuck. there something specific that she did that really made you realize like, you know what? Nope. Like was it just she was trying to have control or Well, I kind of showed her initially that again, some of the stuff we do when we're trying to sell is meant to say a sense of if you move quickly now, you take advantage of this opportunity. But if you want to dilly dally, you not have your mind made up, let's move on to someone who's ready. So um, mm -hmm. I did offer her a free trial to start with. And then she only came back to me many, many, many weeks later on when mm -hmm. my mindset has already shifted to, I don't want to be doing free trials. I, don't, I just don't want to be. So here it's her trying to come to me to say a sense of I'm ready, but my pivot was more of, well, it's got to be some money down because I'm now thinking no more free trials, but okay. She paid some money down, but later on said, look, um, Christmas is around the corner and my fridge busted or this or that, all these excuses. And it's either you do this or I'll have to get my money back. And I said, no problem. Here's your money back. I, look, you know, I totally understand, you know, take care of what you need to take care of, but here's your money back. And I just knew instinctively that her mindset was not in the right place. She's more of not thinking of growth of investment, mm -hmm. but more of counting the pennies that yeah, I can't have someone like that and, and perform my very best for that kind of person. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's really interesting. Cause we had almost the exact same experience when we were doing outreach, when we were offering free trials, this one guy was in HVAC. He didn't get back to us for probably a couple months. And then he wanted the free trial. And we too were like, Oh, we're, we're not really doing a lot of free trials anymore. Like we're, you know, we've got some experience now, but we still wanted mm -hmm. to live up to that. And, uh, it was like little red flags kept coming up just in the way he was talking to us, like the, his skepticism, he too, he didn't really seem excited about growth. He was more concerned about penny pinching. Mm -hmm. And, uh, we ended up, you know, we got his, his money for the ad spend and we were not even done setting it up yet. And well, then we, we had, we had set it up, we, had we set, set it, it up, up but, but it, wasn't it wasn't running. It wasn't like optimized yet. Yeah. So it was like a small budget, 300 yeah. bucks. And it was like, okay, you got it. Boom, boom. We're yeah. good. We're going to run this, see if it gets some traction. If not, we'll slowly increase the budget up. And we even had someone apply an extra $500 to it. We didn't tell them that. Someone yeah. that actually came in from the program and applied it a credit A to Google the grant. So it was like, it's actually going to be $800. So it was like, we're like, we're going to fucking kill this campaign. It's yeah. going to be great. And then what happened was he, all of a sudden overnight, he, I guess he'd started doing some Google research and decided that he was now kind of an expert on Google ads and was telling us, what to do and, and that this was not going to work. And wow. it was, a, I think, a Saturday and we didn't answer his email that day. And he didn't like that. So wow. then he started kind of freaking out and, and wanted, you know, he's like, I don't think this is going to work. And we were like, you know what? Respectfully, we're going to send your money back. Like, yes, we're, <laughs> we're like it was, it was crazy not because it was like <laughs> this sequence to your business, bro. Like you got to get the ad up. And he was like, yo, I want you to change this on the website. No, this needs to change. And I was like, <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't matter. No one's seeing it. Like we need to work, focus on the ad first. And and it was like I was on like I went to Vegas for a bachelor party. So like you know I wasn't like super responsive that weekend. But the ad was up. Like and I told him the plan. And then he was just mm -hmm. like you know he fucking blasted. Uh, like Kelsey was doing meetings and stuff uh, here, and so like he was just blasting the email. And then I looked, and there's like wow. four emails from him. <laughs> give me my money back. And I just said, yeah, man, it's not gonna work out. Yeah. I'm going to take $50 for you wasting my time because uh, yeah. we set some stuff up that we paid for. Uh, but if you're going to act this way, then no. Yeah. So I took the 50 bucks and I was like, here's your 250 bucks back. Yeah. <laughs> like, wow. But wow. it's, Please, it's but just it's... like you said, when, you, when you're getting those feelings that you're like, I think this is not a good fit, but sometimes yeah. it's your first client and you don't want to yeah. throw it in. Your gut yeah. feeling is usually ends up being right. If, yeah. if you need, like, here's the golden rule that I learned from that guy. Yeah, we had about 45 emails going back and forth between us and him before he even sent wow. the $300. So and it wow. was like, he asked question yeah. here, asked question there, we hopped on a meeting with him like three times, like on the phone and all the shit. And, mm. and I just like, kind of took it from that point. I was like, if you need so much convincing for yeah. $300, wow, you're broke. And you're not yeah. worth my time.
oh, because 100%. you're not going to be able yeah. to do it, right? Because like yeah. if you don't fucking see that result or you, like whatever, you're just blaming other people at this point. Like yeah. it's just all the same person acts this same way, and that this is the same time, by the way, we're selling shit. Like it wasn't like wow. we were like wow. We, wow. we were also desperate, but it was like, bro, yeah, they ain't wow. that deep, man. Like yeah. three hundred dollars, yeah, it's not a huge deal. Wow. I'm like holy fuck. All right, it was we'll pull us back on track. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, I, yeah, we don't want to take up too much more of your time, Emmanuel. I'm sure you've got mm. uh, other things to do today. But one mm. of the things that we always like to ask people, I mean, I, I'm curious, actually, are you in the office that somebody has offered you now in exchange for services? Yeah. Oh, nice. Um, I'm, I'm just so grateful. Firstly, okay, this is just one of the board meeting rooms anyway i've got two board meeting rooms, but i have my own spot over there my accountant who's just been a good friend for quite a number of years um we you know he just just really he still holds my accounts looks after stuff for me and i i made it clear to him that look i really want to go all in in this okay and because this is my lane and i was foolish and i didn't go all in before but I'm, my mind is focused now. And he said, look, here's what I've been thinking about for a little bit of time now. And his wife had actually confirmed it to him that, look, have you spoken to Manuel yet? Have you spoken to Manuel yet? And now he's spoken to me, which is just simple. Look, Manuel, we need help. Okay. We need marketing help specifically. He's trying to grow his organization. He's got, I don't know, maybe four or five different staff members, right? Um, but he's really trying to grow things. And he's saying, the problem is that we're not following through on our marketing goals or what we're trying to, we're not very consistent. So since I can see you're invested, I know, and I believe in you that you can do this. I know it's for early days. I can relate to you, but I need you to kind of be plugged in somehow within, within our office somehow. Normally he, he rents a space, a desk for people uh, to pay per month. And he said, look, you can have one of those desks for free. You can use the boardroom facilities. You can use the kitchen, the this, the that. And um, you don't have to pay me anything. But in exchange, I want that marketing help so we can actually not just meet our goals, but to begin to grow, reach out to some very, you know, clients we want to reach to. And, um, and if there's any need for the services I'm providing to cost a bit more, then he might top it up with a bit more money. And I thought, this is a no brainer. Immediately I said, yeah, hundred percent. I want this because obviously I've worked from home for a good while. And so you get that knock, daddy, 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 daddy. And it's like, yeah, yeah. completely forgot that I've got a meeting. I'm working. I know the door's shut, but oh, oh, crying and all kinds of things. I'm thinking, okay, my productivity is obviously affected. Uh, you know, as much yeah. as I'm, yeah. it's great to be able to work from home and I'm very close to my wife and kids, but I can't be consistent in anything if I'm just being interrupted every, every once in a while. I'm not saying they, they completely forgot that. It's just sometimes my wife will be like, babe, babe. I'm thinking, did you forget that I've got a call? I got, that's why I haven't answered you. It's <laughs> yeah. like, okay. so, um, but this really helps to solve that problem that I can just leave home come straight here and focus and then mm -hmm. do everything else I need to do later on anyway. So um, I'm so grateful because I know that that is the momentum I, I, I need to really grow things, to just be in the zone consistently over a period of time. So yeah, you know, I love that. <laughs> that's man. that's yeah. such a good example of like the different opportunities that getting into a business gives you, because yeah. I don't know if you've seen, but I know James has talked about on his YouTube, how like, he got his floors done in his house. Like he was getting all his floors redone. It was like a $20,000 yes. job. And he ended up talking to the the guy doing it. And he was basically ended up trading services for a $20,000 yes. flooring job. He's doing a bunch of marketing projects for him now. So yeah. when you have these skills that can actually yeah. really help lots of different businesses, it opens doors for other kinds of opportunities too. And, and now you have this awesome office to come to and focus in. Yeah. No, absolutely. Absolutely. And, 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 you know, uh, I, it's like, I really want to make this work. And, um, so what I was trying to allude to before with Alex, what you said about, um, not being so desperate about, you know, just any opportunity that comes your way, 
one of the things I, re I read an article about um, Harrison Ford. I'm not sure if anyone of you've picked up that article, mm -hmm. but it said Harrison Ford was a great example as to why you should keep your job uh, whilst you're trying to set up your business. Okay. And I just was a bit curious about this headline. And the, the, the issue with Harrison Ford had was he said he came in 1966 or something around that period to Hollywood with a busload of other people who are aspiring artists and they really want to make it in Hollywood. But he had a, a sense of clarity as to where he wanted to go. So he didn't want to just accept any job. So he actually had a, a carpentry job. He was a carpenter. So he was making something like $500 per week. So when an opportunity will come and he will assess it and say, well, this is paying me 400 and something per week. It's not great acting required. This is not going to be good for my career. So let me just stick with my carpentry stuff until I see the right thing. And he said, what that does is it gives you a chance to say no to the wrong kind of offers that people are presenting to you but then begin to say yes and yes to the right kind of things and not feel like mm -hmm. I'm so desperate for cash. Like a number of people he said that they were just cast aside because they took so many poor roles over time. They weren't known for anything credible anymore. Whereas him, he was just trying to say, okay, I'm only taking what's going to be helping me towards my future. And having that kind of job on the side meant that he could say no to bad opportunities. And that's, that's, that's my game plan with this, a strategic game plan to say, look, it's not to say that this isn't the deal. This is the deal, but I recognize the need that I have a responsibility as a dad and, uh, and as, as a husband to my wife that I need to provide for their needs consistently. So me getting something will be something that will allow me, again, remote-based work. I can still be in this environment and um, get something that allows me to be able to say no to certain opportunities that this is not good enough, but then say, okay, I'm deliberately gone in for those big people that I can really solve bigger problems and get bigger value rewards really. Um, but no, I just thought I'd just share that if that just helps anyone, because for me, that that's one thing that's inspired me recently to think, okay, I've got to do what is necessary in order to really keep this vision growing. Uh, uh, um, yeah. No, absolutely. I totally agree with you. I mean, like I, I was that crazy, crazy idiot that was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'll just quit everything. <laughs> and I'll go in. And I would, I hit those points where you're like desperate, desperate struggling. You're like, how am I going to like, cause it just bombards your thoughts. So it's like, you know, it feels like chaos. You're mm -hmm. like, how am I going to pay rent? How am yeah. I going to do this? What am I going to do if that's the case? Well, then what then? And then you're like, bo, 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 bo. And then, you know, lots of decisions you, then get made out of fear. I think you just like, right. well, it's just the best businesses are, are cash flow positive businesses, right? Yeah. Like, you know, you listen to some people and like, you got to like write off your taxes. You got to spend all the money you can. And I mean, that shit is cool. Right. When you make a bunch of money and you're like, yeah, okay, now I'm going to, you know, I'm going to offset these and I'm going to invest in myself. And then that's going to be a tax yeah. write off. And then that makes sense. But when you're just like, I mean, I need like 5k to live. You know what I mean? Like I need yeah. something here. Uh, otherwise it's a problem. You know, you need to get that yeah. and you need yeah. to secure that. And it, those jobs, mm -hmm. if you're the kind of person who you're in the job mm -hmm. and you're like, you know what? Can't fucking stand it. Well, guess what you're going to do? You're going to spend those three hours every day mm -hmm. working on that side hustle, slowly building it up. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to get a client. You're going to get another one. You're going to get another one. You're going to perfect your process in yes. just those three hours. So you perfect what you're doing over time while still making the stable income. So yes. now when those three hours are like, you're just producing so much income. Now yes. it makes sense to leave and open yes. up the rest of your day. You know what to do. Cause now you're like, Oh, well yeah. I've been dreaming about this for the last, you know, eight Absolutely. months of what I would do. And now it's my time, you know, let's go. Yeah. You kind of, you kind of like, it's like a slingshot. You almost like you gotta go like backwards a little bit to just get launched forward. Yeah, hundred so. percent. I agree. I agree. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, I love it. So I, I just have two short questions for you, and then we'll let you go. Are you okay for time, though? I know we're running a little over uh, here. I don't even know what the time is saying. Yeah, I'm okay for time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, obviously you're now in this office that's allowed you to be way more productive, but I think mm -hmm. a lot of people when they start their online business, a lot of people probably are doing it from home. 
and have families and kids and have to kind of find, you know, little productivity ticks or tips that work for them. So when you Mm. kind of got into this and even still, do you find that there's certain habits or productivity hacks that you found has allowed you to, you know, stay consistent and keep working on this? Um, I'd say one of the first thing is mindset. Um, in the first of my day is important how I begin my day. I, I don't just jump straight in to try and do some work. Um, there's certain things I read um, to just really get myself thinking in, in the zone. And the mindset is a big issue because sometimes, yeah, you can come and there's, there's problems. But if you've set your mindset correct in the morning, it allows you to just, okay, I can, I can handle this. I can do this. And, and and then you just get on with it. And so that that's one of the things that I would say is just reading is quite important. Um, I have a time of just, uh, you know, I'm a Christian. I spend time praying, um, just spend time in God's presence just because I need clarity for my day that's ahead of me. And so, and it's like I, I begin my day prepared for whatever the challenge is going to have to come because I don't know some of the challenges that will have to come my way. Um, so that, that for me, is just important. Just have a time of peace, a time of just feed your mind, because a lot of the times, a lot of communication we have towards ourselves are negative. You can't do it. Uh, you failed last time. Remember you failed last year and the year before that it's yourself reminding yourself how many failures you've, you, you've gone that can defeat you before the day has even begun. If you can start a way of just clearing out some rubbish and just putting some new fresh stuff in. It gives you a bit of advantage to say, let's get on with it. So that, that for me is one thing that's kind of helped me to just, um, and just have a sense of to-do list. What am I trying to achieve today? And just try to tick off as much as I can. Really? So is that like you get up in the morning and that's kind of one of the first things you do is you, you yeah. read and you pray and you get yourself in that yeah. positive headspace? Absolutely. Okay. I've so, nice. I, I just can't start my day without that. When I don't really do it, it's like, okay, things are not going well because there's an imbalance in my mind that I'm not yet ready to attack this day like I should do. Hmm. Yeah. Gotcha. Do you have a certain amount of time that you dedicate to that or just kind of when you're done the section or anything like that? Sorry, I forgot to say, it's about, my routine is roughly about an hour. Okay. That okay. includes my reading, but also exercise. One of the things my friend told me some years ago, I could tell you exercise, Alex. One of the things my a friend told me some years ago <laughs> is um, don't make a big ceremony out of trying to do exercise. Just set a time, do it, carry on with your day. And I learned to just be a bit more just disciplined about, okay, not perfectly, but okay, let me just do my, my squats, my star jumps, my press ups, just bah, 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 and get on with it. But you do it consistently over time, you realize, okay, it's helping you to feel, you know, feel good and feel great. And then attack the day, you know, you fed your mind, you kind of strengthened your body a bit. Let's go. Uh, and so for me, that that's what I kind of do within an hour and then um, move on. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. I like that. Yeah. Starting your day off. I think everybody has their own kind of productivity hacks and everything but it seems like a lot of people it's something that they do at the start of their day because like mm. you said it kind of sets the tone then that's right that's right cool okay cool and then the last question i have for you is just if you you know if there was somebody who was considering getting into entrepreneurship or maybe considering joining mm. a program like lmv and they were you know really thinking about it what uh what do you think that you would tell those people if they asked you what you would advise it's easy because I've been telling a few people who are the fairly new who've been DMing me and stuff. Um, same thing that just if you have a nine to five job, okay, keep it. But you've got to make sure that you're investing towards your dream, your vision, your future, right? You keep that with a sense of knowing that this is your future, right? And no one else is going to drive that steering wheel. You have to be very intentional about what time are you going to give to this? Because over time, you're going to find that this is making some money. I can outsource this one to maybe the tech piece. Someone can take care of it or the sales piece or whatever. And 100% LMV for me, 
I love the community. I love just being able to just connect with people, just sometimes pick up a phone, sometimes close enough to midnight because I'm trying to call someone in America who for them is <laughs> it's, it's a different time zone and, and it only makes sense to call them at that kind of time. But that kind of connection is so essential. You, you have to be deliberate about being engaged in the community um, because the support, the asking the questions, the amount of times I've racked my brain about something, I've asked it on a, a Q and A live at very late at night because I needed to know the answer. And I found, oh, Jason's answered it. This is just so helpful. It's really so helpful. Oh, I've just DM Kelsey. Oh, Kelsey's just responded. All these kinds of things are so essential. You can't do it by yourself. You need a community by yourself around. You need to be engaged in the community. For me, one of the mistakes I made before was not really engaging as much as I should have before, but I've learned from my mistakes. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome that that's, that's really helpful for you. And, and now look at where you are now. You're on the, the leaderboard for winning the sales contest this quarter. That's awesome. <laughs> awesome. No, that. thank you. Yeah. Well, thanks for your time, Emmanuel. It was yeah. a pleasure to, to meet you, talk with you, Thank and I uh, look forward to seeing what you do in the future. And yeah, keep keep engaging in the community, man. I see you in there all the time, just giving value, asking questions. And that's kind of what it's all about is just surrounding yourself with that yeah. mentality and being like, okay, I can do this. I can do this. And mm -hmm. yeah, and kind of passing that forward. So yeah, yeah. Thank oh, you so awesome. much, man. Oh, thank you so much for just interviewing me. I'm just privileged to be here. Oh, we uh, appreciate it. We appreciate your time. Yeah, we're just hanging out, you yeah. know. So <laughs> what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, end this recording here. You'll just yeah. have to stay on for a second. You, sure. you notice that top right percent? It says uploading. I think you're at ninety nine percent. Once it says a hundred, yeah. you'll be good to go. Okay. <laughs> no problem. Cool. All right. All right. And that. All right.